everyone, you will run into the unknown type more and more these days. Because sometimes in your app, you don't really know what the type of your data is going to be. For example, here when I'm fetching data from some API, I'm going to parse that as JSON, and then I get the data here. But I don't really know what this data is gonna be. And I could look it up, I could go to this website, I could check it, I could have an expectation of what the data is gonna be. But I don't really know for sure. This website could technically return anything. And there could also be a mistake on their part, right? Or it could change over time right? so I don't really know for sure what this data variable is gonna be now when you hover it you can see that by default TypeScript actually types this as any which is not really what we want we don't want to have any's in our code base because with any anything goes you can do anything you want and it's not really as precise as we can be so a better thing to do here would be to type this as unknown right so now it's typed as unknown and we'll take a look at what that means and how we can work with this but this is a better way of typing the data that you get when you fetch data from some API, right? And this is getting more and more common these days. So you have to know how to deal with this unknown type. If you don't want to type this manually every time you do a fetch or you're afraid that you're going to forget it, there is actually a library called TS Reset by Matt Pocock. And this library will make it so that if you have that .json in fetch, it will give you an unknown type. It shows you that if you have a fetch here and you have .then and then you do rest.json, you parse it as JSON, the variable that you get here will be typed as unknown. Right, and TypeScript by default types it as any. Right, so check out that library. Uh, I'll have a separate video on that soon. All right, so that was one example of the unknown type that you're going to see sometimes. Another very common source of that unknown type is when you deal with errors. Right, not the most exciting topic, but as a professional developer, you do need to know how to do these try catch statements, for example. So here I have a simple example. I'm using the recent library to send an email. Right, so this is just a service that you can use to send an email, and that could go wrong. Right, could go wrong. So what you want to do is you want to wrap this in a try catch here so here i'm going to attempt to send an email in try but if something goes wrong i want to catch the error right so here i can catch an error right so here what's going to happen is i'm going to invoke this send method from recent but that send method could throw an error right that's what we're catching here and let's see how typescript types this and actually typescript these days types it as unknown and so in the past by default typescript typed this as any but these days it's unknown so we need to know how to deal with this because this try catch is very common and typically what you want to do here is you want to extract some kind of message right so what you want to do is for example uh, let's actually try logging error dot message and when we do this typescript actually starts to complain and it says error is of type unknown that's because we're trying to access dot message on error here but we don't know if error is actually going to be an object that actually has message right because in javascript you can throw anything so this recent library technically could throw for example the number five throw five and so if you have a throw statement like this in a try block you can throw something and that will be the value that you get here in catch right so now this is going to be five and so we're now we're now trying to access that message on the number five, right? Which, which is not possible. This doesn't exist on the number five, right? And this library could also th simply throw a string. Could be, you know, the string some problem. Uh, let me change this back to error, right? And now we're trying to do error dot message on some string, right? That's also not possible. This this is not going to work. And I could also throw an object literal, right? So we have an object literal, which means literally creating an object with the curly braces, and maybe they are actually. Uh, throwing an object with, for example, the message property, right? In that case, this will actually work. They may only have status code as a property, for example, or other properties, but not message, right? So you can throw an object literal like this. Now, typically though, what you see is new error, right? So we can also create an object with this uh, new keyword and then some constructor function or class. And what we can pass in here is actually a message. So here we could say something went wrong, right? And when you do, when you do it like this, what you're going to get with new error is basically an object with that message that you pass in so message property and then the value that you pass in like this and so that's how errors work in javascript right so in javascript you can create an object literal right so literally with curly braces right so really typing it out or you can create an object with new and then some constructor function or class so in this case error right and then you also get an object and specifically you're going to get an object that implements the the blueprint that this class or constructor function uh, has specified right but basically we're throwing an object here and this object will actually have a message property right so uh, this new error will instantiate a new object with the message property having this value right but we don't know if this recent library this is a third-party library we don't know if it's going to throw an 
object like that. And so technically they could be throwing anything. So how do we properly deal with these unknowns in our code base? All right, so let's say we want to extract a message here. So let's create a variable here, message. And then we just need to do some checking here. So we can check if this error, is that actually an instance of that error class or constructor that we just saw. So if that is the case, we can actually just use error.message because this, if you instantiate it with new error like this, new error, you will actually get an object that will have that message property, right? So here you can see TypeScript doesn't complain anymore because it knows if this condition passes, we can safely access the message property here. But remember, I could also throw, not with new error, just an object literal. Maybe this has a message in there with uh, some message. If it's an object literal, it's not going to be an instance of that error class, right? So we need to check for that separately. So we can check else if type of this error is strictly equal to object and it has that message property because it could be you know an object without message in there right so we also want to make sure that message is in error right so if we do this we actually get typescript complaining so here it's saying error is possibly null right and you cannot check if something is in null javascript is a bit strange so a null null is actually also object right? so that's why here it could technically still be null here when we try to check if it's in error here so we also just can simply check does this error even exist right so if error is not null and the type is object and in that object we have the message property then we can still extract error.message right I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so we can uh, see it a little bit better here. All right, so now we have the instance of error and now we have also if it's just a, an object literal that they're throwing or some other object that's not an instance of error, but they could also throw a message just as a string, right? So they could also just do type of error if it's just a string. It can be just the actual message itself, right? So then we can just immediately assign the error, right? They could throw some problem, right? Just a string. They're throwing a string with the message. So we can just assign that to message. And then also what we can do here if all of these checks fail we just want to assign a default value to message here right so typically this is called something like uh, something went wrong and you can add something like try again because what i'm doing here actually i'm this is actually a so-called server action in next.js i'm using the latest next.js features here so basically what's going to happen is this is this is going to be a function that runs on the server so from the client we're calling this function and it's going to attempt to send an email and if that fails somehow we want to return a message to the front end so you can output something to the user you know something went wrong or some more specific message that we get from the error right so here we want to return something to the client here and i'll have a separate video on server actions uh, soon so make sure you subscribe so here we want to return an object to the client with just let's say a message and that's going to be this message right so in javascript if you have the same identifier for key and value you can just write it like this right so now we have a pretty safe way of extracting the message from the error i'm doing this in one server action here but typically you're going to have other functions that you want to run on the server. So it would be nice if we could reuse this. Let's quickly extract this into its own utility function. Write that up here. You could put it in a in a utilities file or whatever. Let's just do it here. I will call that get error message or extract error message. Let's call it get. And this will take in an, an error and Copilot wants to type it as any. This is actually uh, not the default anymore that we get from TypeScript. Right? So now it's going to be unknown. Let's just copy this code. Let's see. We copy this code and I'll paste it right here and then what we want to do is we want to call that function so here if there is an error we want to return this object to the client with message in there and then we're going to call that function so we're going to call that function we're going to pass the error in there and at this point we still don't know what it's going to be right so it's unknown but this function will extract the message from there that will be returned here so now we need to return the message right so at the end the message will be returned and that's what we're going to set to the client right so this is a nice utility function now Typically, I don't type the return type of my function, but I think here it's a good idea because here we actually want a string, right? So here I want to be very specific and explicit. This function should actually return a string. And when we do that, TypeScript complains, let's see, type unknown is not assignable to type string, right? So this is not really helpful. Why is it give, Why does it think that it can still be unknown by the time that we get here? So this is a bit strange. So we don't really know where this problem is coming from. So what I like to do is just make it more explicit. So 
here I'm going to say message. Well, this should also be a string. And when I do that, we get another warning here. If I hover this, we can now see there's something going on here. So now it's more specific. Now you can see that that error that message is could technically be unknown. And why is that? Because here we have an object. So for example, if we have an object here with with the message property, right? So it could have other properties, of course. Right, 404 and then message property. Well, that should work here, right? So message could be not found. It, it's also possible that it's not a string, right? It actually could be a number five. This is an object, right? So if error it exists, it's not null. Type of error is object. And there is indeed a message property in here, right? But here it's actually the value for that is actually gonna be a number, right? So this is pretty advanced stuff. So what we wanna do here is we wanna make sure that we get a string here so we can cast this to a string, right? So here you can use Use a string with capital case you can wrap it in there and it will cast whatever this is to a string so if it's actually the number five it will make that a string five right so then we can be rest assured that it's going to be a string right so this is uh, already a little bit more advanced but now we're, we're very precise with the types here and this is going to reduce a lot of potential bugs in your code well done if you made it this far this is already quite tricky i'm very close to releasing my next.js react course in which we will also discuss typescript but specifically in the context of react and next.js so i highly recommend if you're interested in that to get on the email list because you'll be notified and you'll get a discount when I release it. Now, I do want to say, I see a lot of people jump into React and TypeScript, but they haven't really mastered the underlying fundamentals yet. And those are JavaScript, but also CSS. If you want to work as a full stack or front-end developer, you need to know both of them. So I have courses on them as well. Highly recommend check them out. Links are in the description. And yeah, now we have a really nice way, clean way of extracting this error message. We can reuse this. We can put this in a utilities file and then reuse it whenever we have another server action. So make sure you check out my other videos. One of them will be about these server actions. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.